Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of the Hump Day Hiatus. I am solo today and I uh, wanted to take this opportunity to just chat with you a little bit more about my personal journey with uh, healing my relationship to food and my body and how the body trust core element that we've been talking about this month, which is externalizing shame, blame, and bias, um, really helped get me started on my journey to um, feeling more confident in my body and um, breaking out of the beliefs and the behaviors I was engaging in that um, led me to place my worth and my value on my appearance. So I'll be sharing um, some tips with you today about how uh, you can start to feel a little more confident in the body you're in as it is right now without having to change a thing about it. Often, <clears throat> you know, we're taught that in order to gain um, a sense of worthiness or confidence or value, um, you know, we need to change who we are. We need to change things about ourselves because those there, there are things that are wrong about us or broken. And in actuality, you know, we really just need to change the story that we're telling ourselves and uh, the beliefs that we hold about who we are and um, come to a place of understanding about the culture that we live in and what it's actually um, offering us. And so uh, for me, one of the first places that I started was learning a little bit about where the beliefs I had about myself and my body and um, the stories I was telling myself about it came from. And there are many places where we can trace the origins of these back to, starting with, you know, um, our, our family, um, with our friends, peers, teachers, um, with books, movies, TV shows, magazines, social media, with the, the medical community, um, and I'm sure that there are so many more that we could add to this list. So um, right away, you can see how it can become this, um, you know, com complex thing to kind of start to take a look at. Um, and yet, if we don't, we'll constantly find ourselves in this, this wheel of, you know, trying to fix what isn't broken and chasing... Um, chasing the wrong, the wrong information. And so I took a course with Be Nourished. I did a retreat um, with them. And um, for the first time in my life, I really was exposed to this thing called diet culture, right? And I learned that diet culture is, you know, this, this, common kind of um called like like group knowing consciousness that says that um if our bodies don't look like whatever the thin ideal is at the time or whatever is being um classified as beautiful at the time then there's something wrong with our body and I've kind of always known on some level that these, these messages didn't make me feel good about myself, but I never really fully understood why. And it's because that's what they're designed to do, right? If there is a company that is selling makeup, for example, 
right? In order to create a need for us to buy that product for them to profit, they need to um, also create a problem, right? So we're taught that if we don't wear makeup, that we're not our best selves. We're not as beautiful as we could be, or we're not realizing our full potential, right? And so they create this feeling of lack within us, this feeling of brokenness, less than, so that we'll go out and buy whatever it is that they're selling. And the same goes for the weight loss industry. The same goes for, you know, the supplement and, and health food industry. And at the end of the day, you know, we're receiving thousands of these messages throughout the time that we're awake and at such a rapid pace that we're not able to be conscious and aware of all that's that's going in that we're basically kind of absorbing through osmosis. And so this is why we can't actually really pinpoint, you know, what it is that doesn't feel right, why we're constantly feeling the need to hustle for more for um, our worth, as Brene Brown describes it, right? Hustling for our worthiness, why we never feel content just being who we are. And it's because we're socialized to believe that who we are isn't good enough. So we'll go out and buy whatever is going to fix this problem that we've become or that we have so that we can, you know, be, be happy and free like models in magazines. And so I really started to kind of dive into diet culture a little bit more and trace some of its lineages back and um we're gonna maybe save that for another call because it's quite a large topic but um you know it leads back to to the patriarchy and a lot of ideas that <clears throat> were very prevalent in past generations about what women's specific roles responsibilities were um, right. And going back to a time where women didn't have um, all of the rights that um, that men possessed. Right. Um, and here we are still in a time where um, we're struggling in the world. Right. And minorities um, are struggling to be seen, to be heard. Um, to to be valued right and so it can help to step outside of our own boxes that we live in and get really curious about whether what other people's experiences are and not be so judgmental or make as many assumptions as we make right and that doesn't mean that we're bad people because we do these things it just means that we're we're busy and we you know our brain categorizes things in certain in certain ways and um if we don't start to take a look at that sometimes those things that it's categorized or um has organized can really start to work against us, right? So we're talking about those beliefs that we have, those stories that we tell ourselves that we learned when often when we're very, very young about how we're supposed to be in the world, um, they really shape who we are. And if we don't start to kind of examine or look at those more closely on a bit of a regular basis, then they really start to limit the possibilities and the potential of where we can go and what what we can do. <clears throat> and so it's recognizing these these ideologies that we're living within so that we can ask ourselves, you know, does this serve me? Does this feel right for me? And then make a choice whether or not we want to participate that participate in them or not. But without kind of recognizing that there is an ideology or a system at play, we just feel like we don't have any choice. We feel like, well, this is the way it is, and I just need to suck it up and move on. That's what everybody does. It's just part of living, 
right? And there are some pieces that, you know, that may be true for and others that we may end up finding if closer examined, we're able to opt out. And that's kind of where my journey began is I recognized this diet culture, right? And these systems set up by the patriarchy and white supremacy and realized that they weren't made for me to thrive, right? So of course I would feel less than and struggle with trying to fit within them because they weren't made for me. And so I started to make choices about whether or not I wanted to let those systems and those those ideologies and structures define and dictate who I was in relation to them and how I was going to live my life or if I wanted to start to create my own. And for me, this is really where reclaiming the wild began. It was, you know, looking at all the ways that I had been taught to live and asking myself if they rang true for me, if they resonated for me. Are those supportive of who I actually am, right? Which is a whole other um, exploration. Are they supportive of who I am, what I need, what I desire, and where I want to go? And if the answer was no, then the next question was, okay, so what do I need to create? What do I need to do in order to feel supported to get there in a way that feels good and feels right for me? So instead of just taking on and sitting in the shame and the blame that I felt from living in a system and within ideologies that I was never going to me measure up to, that I was never going to feel enough in, I decided to create my own way. And so I began to reclaim all of these pieces of myself that the system and society and um, these ideologies told me didn't belong, right? And I bought in because I, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to belong in community and not be, not be different, right? Because we know what happens to folks who are different. They're treated badly, bullied, and far, far, far worse in our culture and almost everywhere around the world. And so we want to limit this pain that we experience. And we do that by conforming, right? But it is required of conformity that we let go of the pieces of ourselves that make us uniquely who we are and that give us our um, power and the right to feel that we can take up space in this world, right? They give us the, um, they give us the information and the wisdom that we need to walk towards what it is that's going to fulfill us in life, what it is that's going to give us joy, right? Instead of saying, oh, I can't do that that way because that's not how everyone's doing it, or that's not how it's done, right? That's going against the norm. So I'm just going to forget what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, and distrust my own wisdom and, and knowledge so that I can, you know, do what I'm told, essentially. And so slowly over time, I started examining all of these beliefs that I had, these biases that, oh, life is supposed to be this way, or you're supposed to, you know, behave this way. Or, you know, if a person looks like this, they're supposed to be why. And I really just started getting curious over and over and over again about what it was that I was telling myself about my experience. and eventually the stories got quieter the voices got quieter and fewer and far far between till the point where i'm able to 
experience what I'm experiencing without the chatter in my mind and I can just be with the moment and I talk about this as um as being embodied or a state of embodiment is being with our senses and our sensations and experiencing the moment through all the different layers of our being and so throughout doing this work I found myself feeling more free and more liberated to um, show up and live in ways that honored who I was, not who I had been told to be, which would have required me to abandon, to orphan, um, and also continue to shame pieces of myself that I was told didn't belong right? But don't belong according to whose agenda. So this is something that I'd like you to think about, you know, what are the pieces of yourself that you feel shame around or you blame for, um, you know, struggles in life? And really take a look at, you know, who made the rules? Who is standing to benefit from these beliefs and ideologies? structures and systems that you're living within is it you or someone else who are they supporting who's financially profiting so get really curious about the stories that happen behind the scenes in your life so that you can start walking towards what serves you best what feels good for you best and supports where you want to go and who you're becoming it's my hope for all of us that we can feel someday safe and valued as we are right we can we can carry this on from our childhood and our youth into adolescence and adulthood so that we don't end up here having to unlearn all of what we've been taught about how to disassociate and disconnect with our bodies so that we can fit into a society and a culture that serves to profit other folks right that exploits our life for others gain and it's also my hope that each and every one of us can live from a place of deep knowing that your body and your life is here for your experience. You get to experience the world on your terms, right? You're not here for others in the world to experience you. This is your story that you get to write. So thank you so much for tuning in today and listening. I will be back next week, hopefully with a guest. We're still kind of working out, um, still kind of working that out. Um, and then until um, next time, if you have any questions or thoughts, feedback, please feel free to share on the video. Um, also on my Facebook page, Reclaiming the Wilds. For those who are interested, I offer a free five-step guide to um, shedding body shame. You sign up for my mailing list on my website, reclaimingwild.com. And you can also follow me on Instagram, uh, reclaiming.the.wild. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your week. And we'll see you next Wednesday, same time, same place, noon for the hump day hiatus, your weekly pause from diet culture and body shaming bullshit. Thanks. Bye.